how to make or how I made an oversized bookshelf with arch elements. Let's get into it. This is a commissioned piece, so after nailing down the design materials and finished with the client, I cracked down with my first cuts into four quarter furniture grade pine. I started by cutting the rough lengths for five panels and eight stretchers that would make up the framework for the base cabinetry, the dimensions for which I'll put in the description below. Then with the jointer, planer, and table saw, I squared each piece of rough saw. To get the panels the right width, I laminated a couple of the squared pieces together. Then cut them down to their exact sizes. After a quick sand down and another trim to account for the addition of the face framing in the future, I added quarter inch rabbits on the back length of each piece that would later become a side panel of the cabinet. These would accommodate the cabinet backing. Then I cut three quarter inch dados to roughly four inches above the bottom of each side panel to accommodate the bottom panels. To start piecing the puzzle together, I added a little wood glue to the dados and used square clamps to align the first box. With those set, I added a few pocket holes to the stretchers that would anchor the upper part of the base cabinets. Then fastened them to the piece. I worked through the same process for the second box. Then, pleased with the alignment, turn the whole thing over to anchor the kick plate stretchers into place, adding the needed rigidity and strength. Not pictured were a few additional pocket holes on each of the undersides of the bottom panels for added anchoring. Now I hate to do it, but I'm going to break the fourth wall and level with you that the footage I got to explain how I did the face framing for this base cabinet was terrible. So while I sand that face framing down, let me use the way I framed the upper shelves to explain. I started by laying out the actual cut pieces on the project to determine the cut lengths for each piece. Then cut them down to size and use pocket holes on the back side to connect the frame pieces together. With the frame together, I flipped it over to hide the pocket holes and use a finishing gun to place the frame, then puttied them to hide the nail holes. Alright, back to sanding. With the finishing level sand down complete, I cut, sanded, and placed the quarter inch backer pieces. Using a nail gun, I secured them to the base cabinet. Mm -hmm. 
With the base cabinet structurally looking good, I turned to the base tabletop. I started by cutting some 10 quarter pieces of pine down to rough length. Then after ripping them to fit on the joiner, squared each piece. and then laminated them back together. I decided to laminate the full counter in two sets so I could really pay attention to each long grain joint as they cured and help avoid cupping. Once dried, I trimmed the edges square. And ripped the width down to the exact 16 inch dimension. After that, it was time for another finishing level sand down. Setting that aside for now, we jump to another element of the bookcase, the shaker style doors for the base cabinet. Again, I started with another round of jointing and planing to square the pieces to make up the eight styles and eight rails for the doors. After ripping the squared lumber down to two and a quarter inch pieces, I used a tongue and groove bit to cut the quarter inch deep recesses in the styles and rails, remembering to account for this half inch in the final lengths of my rails. Then after cutting the rails and styles down to dimension, equating to a door roughly an inch wider and an inch taller than the cabinet opening, I used a cross cut sled and a simple cut line jig to create the tongues and the rails that would fit in the grooves of the styles. With all the cuts made, I dry fit the rails and styles together to get a proper dimension for the inside panels for the doors. Again, accounting for the additional half inch recess, I used these measurements to cut the panels from a quarter inch ply. Before gluing the doors up, I gave the panels a finishing level sand down and water-based dye and whitewash coat selected by the client. I pre-finished these panels because of the nature of the shaker style doors and how the panel is able to float in its housing. If I had waited to apply this darker dye, I would risk an unfinished bit of pine floating into view if the climate of its future home wasn't exactly what was going on in my shop. With those dry, I glued up the shaker doors. Then gave the rails and styles a finishing level sand down. And added these to the temporarily abandoned pieces of the project for the next and largest element, the upper bookshelf. After yet another round of squaring and laminating, this time creating three long side panels and four top and bottom panels, I again cut all the laminated panels down to size before giving them a rough sand down. Then, using a router this time, cut three quarter inch datas into both the top and bottom of each long side piece to accommodate the top and bottom panels for the shelf. After that, I used the table saw to cut rabbits on both the front and back of the side panels this time. These ended up being about a half inch wide. Then, I cut a few pocket holes in the hidden faces of the top and bottom panels before beginning again to piece everything together with an array of glue, square clamps, and pocket hole screws.
Because of their larger dimensions, I added the backer board to the back rabbit of the first box before moving to the second to help add rigidity and help keep the box from racking while I finish the construction. push the backer piece tightly into the front of the rabbit and again add more rigidity, I slid a few lap stretchers into the backer board rabbit and anchored those into place as well. Making sure to keep the first shelf box squared and aligned, I did the same thing to complete and anchor the second box. Then it was time to turn to the front half inch rabbits and tackle the arch features. I'll skip another squaring session and get right to ripping down to size the many 20 inch pieces I used to create the arch panels. I laminated these planks. While those cured, got to work on the side supports for the arches using the table saw to cut a tongue to fit the rabbit groove in the shelf boxes. I probably should have used a second push stick for this, even though the saw blade was set a half inch below the surface of the cut piece. With those ready, I turned back to the cured arch panels and used a circular saw and table saw to square off the edges of the rectangles. Then marked a line at the actual final foot of the arch before placing the circle cutting jig roughly center to that line. Then got to cutting out the arch. The center placement didn't exactly matter because once the arch was cut, I took the cut piece to the table saw and used a cross cut sled to cut within an eighth of an inch of the inner edge of the arch on either side to achieve its final dimension. This would ensure I could make the arch seamless when installed. Then I drilled a few pocket holes on either side of the arch. before turning to installing the large arch supports in the front rabbits. With those in, I placed the arches using glue and finishing off the pocket holes. I also anchored the arch supports with pocket holes at their base to increase the number of connection points and add strength to the aesthetic feature. Then I used a chisel and sandpaper to tune up the edge of the arches to make a seamless connection point. With those in place, it was time to get to another round of installing and finishing the face framing. Next up are the shelves. These are the last elements to go through yet another bout of squaring and laminating. Then of course, trimming and ripping them down to size before giving them a finishing level sand down. Finally, time to get this thing the right color. I started with a custom water-based dye coat on every surface. Of 
course, I added the chamfer to the tabletop before adding the die coat. While that dried everywhere, I cracked on with the crown molding. Cutting a side piece down to size and anchoring it in place, Then using it to mark the exact cut line for the long front piece, I anchored it and the final side piece into place. Then use a homemade putty to fill in any gaps. Before adding the same die coat to the molding. To protect the piece, I finished with several coats of water-based polyurethane, making sure to do a quick high grit sanding scratch coat between each layer. Once that cured, the last steps were all installations. I started by using a Craig jig to cut recesses for the shelf pins in both the upper shelves and lower cabinets. I used another jig to cut recesses for the cabinet door hardware. I used a half inch mark as my guide to place the doors at a relatively similar height before using the built-in adjustments in the hardware to get them perfect. Then with a homemade jig, I placed the cabinet door pulls. The backer scrap piece helps eliminate tear out while drilling the space for the bolts. Then I created the recesses for the Z brackets that would hold the tabletop to the base cabinet. I used a biscuit cutter to cut the recesses in the upper stretchers. Then placed the tabletop and anchored it into place. To polish off the piece, I added the final bits of trim. And lastly, installed the shelves. And that's 
a stinking wrap. Thanks for watching. For more behind the scenes and shop talk, join us on the Patreon. Until next time.